Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, we have the Banner Guards. We've finally got around to getting them leveled up and we've actually had a bit of time testing them out. Now, I know I say this a lot, but what an interesting unit. <laughs> they, I don't know if I like them or not. I really, sometimes I really like them and other times they really frustrate me. I've had a real mixed feeling with them um, over the time I've been playing them so far. They are, however, without doubt, one of the best looking units in the game. I just absolutely love them. This guy carrying the banner, what an epic looking guy. Wish we had more units looking like this. But let's go into them and break them down then. And let's start with their abilities. Because it's pretty complicated and it takes some working out. It certainly took me a while to get my head around them, although maybe I'm just a bit slow. So we'll just skip the banner for the second and we'll talk about the other two. The three ability... It's just a charge. It's a flat charge, pretty standard. It's probably their best combat ability, um, the charge on this unit. Their, their melee isn't great, if I'm honest, but their charge is decent. And actually, it's quite a quick charge. It's not as good as a paladin. It doesn't sort of hit and push through in quite the same way, but it's a decent charge. Next up, we have Indomitable. And it basically gives three possible buffs, depending on which formation you're in. If you're in... Um, uh, sort of a loose formation, you're getting increased defense and damage increase. If you're in guard formation, which I think it means like the Shiltron, then all defense values are increased. And then if you're in column formation, kind of like this end one, then you're just getting a flat 500 point damage increase. Well, I think for me, given that the defensive stats are, are relatively poor um, and they don't hold up particularly well defensively, there seems little point in going for anything defensive. So for me, I just tend to run them in the column. Better for charging if nothing else. And I think that extra 500 points of damage is actually reasonably significant. And it means they do actually hit fairly hard. So, you can ignore this on the end. This is just an Ironside's Doctrine. It's not relevant. We have Plant the Banner. So this works in a multitude of ways. So you can just press the one key. And the guy who's carrying the banner, so long as he is still alive, if he gets killed, obviously the banner's gone. It sods off. You can't use it. So if he's alive, he'll plant the banner, and it's kind of very similar to Shield Maidens. Uh, it's quite a small AoE, but anything in it basically gets a 200-point defense buff. It's only going to last for 15 seconds, though. It's not that long, so very comparable to the Shield Maidens Guardian. I suppose it's nice in the sense that it's, it's, it's a handy little bit of support, but you can also then pick up that banner as a hero, and then you're going to basically equip that as your hero weapon for a period of time. Now that's going to give you options um, of basically three abilities. T is basically just an attack. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. The other one is going to be a rally. And this is going to refresh the cooldown of yours and nearby allied charges. Now that's really important because that means you can charge in with the three key, then use the rally from the banner, and you can then immediately charge again. On top of that, you're going to get 30% extra charge damage, and you're going to get a bit of damage reduction as well on the charge in. So that is actually quite nice. In the PTI, it also did something with giving CC immunity, but that effectively meant you could give Keshig's two charges and CC immunity, and it was absolutely ridiculous. So they, they seem to have scrapped that as an idea, which I think is undoubtedly a good thing. Um, you can also basically charge with the banner. It basically gives you like a hero charge. And your unit will charge with you as you do that. I think, to be honest, for me, I tend not to find that I don't really use that all that often. Occasionally, if I've got my other two charges off and I just kind of, you know, want to knock some units down, knock an enemy hero down with it as he's trying to escape, then it can kind of have a place. But by and large, I tend not to really charge with the banner. Because I think the times that it takes to do all this, and this is the biggest problem with, for me with the whole banner setup is the length of time it takes. It takes, say, three seconds to place the banner down. You've then got to pick the banner up. That takes another two seconds. Then you've got to use your rally to refresh your charge cooldown. It's another two or three seconds. At this point, you're heading on for pushing on for 10 seconds before you can even get your second charge off and head in with your unit. Then it starts to become very inflexible. Battles just don't stay static for that long where you can get all these things going. If they really reduce the animations of some of these, I think the unit would be a lot more versatile without being overpowered. Because they're certainly, if there's one thing they're not, they're not overpowered. 
A few other things I'll point out. They are fast, and that does make them nice. They're quite an enjoyable unit to move around the map with. 5.8 is a really nice base movement speed. And it does mean you can sort of position them and deploy them nicely. The column formation is quite nice, and that charge isn't bad. Particularly when you get that second charge with the buff from the banner. I suppose there is an argument that you could plant your banner, give yourself the buff before you charge. You wouldn't get two charges out of it, but you would get your better charge with your 30% extra charge damage as your first charge, which would be kind of nice. Um, in terms of veterancy line, I've basically gone up the upper lines. There didn't really seem to be a lot of benefit down the bottom line. There's some occasional slight defense um, increases down here, things like this range damage reduction, which is kind of nice, a bit of extra health, and then a flat defense increase along the bottom but still what's the best going to be 640 on slashing defense you know woohoo nothing particularly fantastic i don't think whereas you're coming along the top line you get things like the charge cooldown then as you go along the top um you get things like um indomitable gives you a movement speed buff you also get the flat movement speed buff um along here you can increase block break and just a flat damage reduction which is not just against range but also against melee which in my opinion is kind of better and finally before we actually get into some clips and i feel like i've been talking forever doctrines um obviously i put an iron sides on them as i said they're not got great defensive stats I do find it surprisingly hard to use because it makes it go to the 4 key. And very few units have a 4 unit abilities. So I actually, from from where my fingers are on WASD, I find it quite hard to deploy this iron slide sometimes. But I get it, I'm getting there. I'm learning, slowly. Um, increased slashing, increased blunt damage, just as a sword doctrine. The um, cooldown on the Indomitable. Arguably, you could replace this with something like a charge cooldown. I'm not sure how worth it this is. Most fights you've either won or lost by the time your Indomitable kills off cooldown. Obviously, a bait through Doctrine just for that flat 95 damage increase, and the increase Banner Guards block by 300 points from doing the missions. So anyway, let's hop into some battles with them. Let's see what we can do, and let's see who we can stick with our banner. So we kick things off on the Conqueror's City. Um, we've already got the A point, obviously. No one defends it. Um, and most of the team is pushing from the other two sides, so I kind of went round the back trying to see if I can get to the supply point, which is basically directly above me. Well, the gate's open, which is a good sign, and these javelins seemed kind of initially unaware that we were down there. They sort of walked past us in a line. On a side note, that's why you don't use the C formation. But anyway, with those other reapers, we push into them. We just initially push in just with X, then I charge in. See, the speed of the charge is actually really quite fast. Something like this, like some javelins, it really deals with them without a problem. You know, it's not a not a difficult unit to deal with. We can then get up the top. Oh, there's a nice juicy unit of archers here for us. Well, even better. Obviously, these guys, they've got high damage. In this formation like this, they just cut through the archers absolutely fine. But as any unit would, I mean, that's nothing particularly special. But it does kind of touch on their maneuverability. And you can see we've got these enemies coming down. So I planted the flag down. I thought these guys were going to be more of a threat than they kind of actually were. And my charge was still on cooldown. So that's why I grabbed them. Because I was going to use the flag to reset the charge cooldown. And then re-attack those pikes. Well it didn't happen. Pikes basically got themselves killed. But this short bow was being a pain. So I decided it was time for him to go down. So you do get knocked down with this um, hero banner. And then we were able to pin him into the corner with the knockdown. And then beat him to death with the flag. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out quite nicely. Anyway, we can actually finally get the unit back up to the supply point now properly and start to get them healed up. But you can kind of see the length of time it takes to deploy a flag and pick it up. And I didn't even do my rally to actually reset my charge cooldown. That was just my plan. And I saw those pikes, I would say, a reasonable amount of time in advance. Yet it still wasn't enough time for to plant the flag pick it up and do the three stages and do the and do the rally to, to, to reset the charge cooldown. So he's kind of, that's what I mean when I say it's inflexible. You've got to be super aware or super planning your moves 10 seconds in advance and that's pretty hard in this game when it doesn't really play out like that. Now I'm a little bit cowardly here, I should have brought my unit with me straight away. I kind of thought we were just going to go and grab these grenades and then push back because normally quite a lot defending these upper supply points. Not quite sure where that glaive went. <laughs> Good job, good job servers, about as quality as ever. But since the Reapers were just sort of going ham and going for it, I thought, oh Christ, you know, if everyone's going, I'll come and support. And one of the benefits, 
the unit is fast. I mean, they get here quickly, which is kind of nice. So they turn up, come round, and I just go straight in for the charge. Again, there's nothing I can do with the flag really in that moment because it would take too long to plant it all. So we get stuck into some of the units at the back, start to engage, picking up quite a lot of kills. I've got my Indomitable on, doing quite a lot of damage against these enemy units here at the back. Deals with them quite effectively. I plant the banner down because I'm wanting to go down the stairs into the enemy javelins. It takes so long to pick the bloody thing up. I was going to reset, do a rally to reset my charge to charge in. But since I just wanted to get into the fight, I just charged down with the banner. Just grabbed those last few little bits there. But by that point, the unit again is pretty damaged. They do sort of stack up damage fairly quickly. So I'm kind of wanting to get them back. Since the banner was going to come off cooldown shortly, I don't know. I thought I might as well just rally them for, for some random reason. But we activate it and there we go. Back onto the supply point. Back healing up. But yeah, banner has a lot of potential. I don't know. Just that, that the, the, the animation times is what for me makes it fairly impractical. Or it can at least be hard to use. When you can get it to work, it's obviously really quite nice. Because you can double charge with that 30% charge bonus, etc, etc. But it's just, it just kind of requires a few factors to come together. And I find them a fairly hard unit to play well anyway. And then when you're trying to pre-predict 10 seconds in advance, I find it even harder. Anyway, so far, it's sort of gone pretty well. I think I think we're up to sort of 60, 70 kills or something now. Um, and I'm thinking about where I want to go. One of the weaknesses I find with this unit is, well, it's basically their combat abilities aren't amazing. They've got decent damage and they've got a decent charge, but they don't have much defense. And they do kind of struggle against most um, sort of equivalent tier enemy units, unless you get a good drop on them. So, like this, for example, we come around the corner, got these pal uh, palace guards attacking. I get the charge in for one. We get some into the front of them, some into the side and some behind. I go straight on with my Indomitable, so I've got my 500 point damage bonus. I'm getting stuck in with my hero. And actually, we cut through those palace guards quite effectively. If we just walk them into a front of a braced unit of palace guards though, you know it wouldn't work. The unit would lose, they're not that good. But in that sort of situation where you can get the charge off, when you can get the jump on them when they're not in formation, catch the enemy heroes out and get in and sort of assist as a hero as well, and actually, they, they run fairly convincingly. And we didn't even take particularly very many losses for the for the process of doing it, if any, actually. So, they can work. People will say that they have no... You know, they're absolutely useless in combat. They're not. They're just not amazing. You just have to be careful with them. You just have to think of them more as a flanking sort of side fighter. They're just not really a big front line. It's no use throwing them into... Um, you know, a fight where there's five units of enemy Iron Reapers, a unit of Madao, they will just get absolutely slaughtered. But anyway, with that stuff going down, we're now making a real team push for the point. Up to 98 kills now. Pushing in with them. Um, obviously, I'm expecting them to die in this situation. We get quite a few kills on the charge, which is nice. But, you know, we're trying to make a play for point now. And kind of, we've got past the point of trying to keep the unit alive for as long as we can. Not worried if they die, just using them to get a little bit extra damage in just to try and secure that point. I do move them out of the way when we see the enemy Hazard charge coming down the hill because, I don't know, it just felt just felt a bit harsh to kind of leave them to die in the middle. <laughs> so we do save them. Um, and then we get stuck back into the fight and we can continue to apply the pressure. I was kind of hoping to get a treb then in that moment so we could um, put it at the top of the staircase because that can be quite nice, particularly as all the enemy stuff comes trying to come down. Pick up an enemy hero kill. And then it's really just a case of trying to keep pressure on on the enemy and trying to keep everything off the point. We'll go for a charge up the hill one more time. Trying to get the unit stuck in. There's basically nothing really left of them now. Come on, just a few points left to go. Just try and push the last few people off the point. Try and go for a trip. But there we go. We get ourselves a nice victory. And we did okay. I think the unit picked up something like 90 odd kills. Yeah, 91 kills, which is not too bad for what these guys can do. But I also find you can use them on some um, wall pushes and things like that. Like for example, on this little match on Hidden City. Um, pushing up and trying to use the unit's speed really to flank. As we come up, look, we can see we've got pikes and guns down the little alleyway behind the, I don't know if you call it an alleyway, behind the little building -y thing on the top. I'm good at architecture. Uh, so I push the unit round, just using the speed, just X them into the guns, 
which obviously they deal with no problem, and then we just send them on with the charge, which they can flatten the hero fairly comfortably without much too, too much trouble, which is a good job, because I completely ham up my controls and press the wrong button. <laughs> they even go and grab the second hero. They do fine in those sort of situations, you know, because they get the rear charge, so they're getting the criticals, they actually have good damage, it's just that they kind of get pushed and beaten around a fairly, fairly easily. Anyway, we had quite a bit of other stuff coming along, so I've got the flag planted down. Pick up the flag and get a real good idea of this, um, like the lead time you have to think about this for. Okay, now I'm using my rally. We're still going, we're still preparing, so I've reset my charge call down now. Now I can move the unit into place, now I can aim the charge, and I can set it off. So it just takes so long, it's so painful. It does work nicely, and it gives it a good charge, and I can get behind now and use the sort of AoE knockback of the flag to kind of push that unit around so my banner guards can get stuck in a little bit more. And actually, they pick up quite a few kills, do they? Let me push them up, we even get a third hero kill. And there we go. Not amazing, not the greatest unit in the game, but they do have quite a few options available to them. And it is kind of fun when to get the flag to work. I think if the flag had a much shorter animation, maybe a half or a quarter of the time, then I think the unit would have a lot more flexibility in how it deployed its abilities. And I think it would be a lot more useful. The base damage of the unit isn't that bad. It doesn't need to be an amazing combat unit. But the differences it has, the unique abilities that it has, have to be flexible enough to be usable. Because otherwise then it's just really hard to deploy the unit in those situations and not really a lot of point of using it. But anyway, that's just been my experience with them so far. How have you guys been getting on with them? Do let me know in the comments down below. I'd be interested to hear if any of you are absolutely loving them or how if you're really, really hating them. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more concrete blade content. Thanks for watching, guys. I shall see you all on the next one.